My name is Robert. I'm 23 years old from San Jose, California. Uh, I rap, I work, labor, and um, I'm here in Sacramento now. And uh, went over to my dad's one day, and uh, he said we're gonna go check out check out this this guy he met who just got out of the pen from doing a, a pretty big stretch, and uh, went over there and met him, and that's how it started. When I first met John, I was uh, not clean, not sober. I uh, had had fell off the wagon and I was using a little bit. So when I came around and seen him, it was high by. The more I got back into the sobriety and, and staying clean and stuff, I uh, I actually started running around with John and uh, he he's at one of my buddy's houses, who's uh, who, where he's staying. And uh, I had been talking to him about working out, and he said he had a full weight set there, and uh, he said you could come over anytime and use it, man. And uh, and uh, that's kind of where the relationship started. <laughs> I mean, if you look at it, he's done more time than I've been alive. And, uh, I mean, y you go around the guy, you, you wouldn't even think that he could do something like that from where he is today, you know? It's it's real humbling to, to see somebody. He's, he's never been mad when I talk to him. When he gets upset, he's always calm-spoken. He uh, very well-mannered and... Uh, for, for somebody to be doing that much time and then coming out here and being that humbling, it, it, for me, it's just, uh, it's like, what do I really got to bitch about, you know what I mean? I mean, I've, I've done 60 days in juvenile hall, that's nothing, man, that's a daycare for fucking teenagers, you know? But uh, that's the biggest thing I've got from him is, is the patience and the humbleness is that no matter how bad you think things get, they're really not that bad, you know? My first uh, week out was a huge transition, you know, uh, just being able to go in and sit on the front porch and watch the cars go by. And I think I've, I've watched other men that, that have come out and they're, they're stuck on the same thing too. So when I view them, I, I view how I felt myself. And it always allows me to go and revisit that. Um, nothing that I did in prison, any of the programs, uh, reaching out and to the communities, nothing prepared me for what was ahead of me. I didn't have an ID. Uh, there wasn't any cell phones when I went in and I'm not computer literate. And without any ID out here, you can do nothing. So until I could get a birth certificate to where I could start to get an ID to where I could start to get a social security card to where uh, I could move around and, and function. Uh, I used to walk around the neighborhood a little bit you know, a block, like a block at a time, just to kind of familiarize myself. And guys at the house would put me in the car and, and take me to a store and watch me, you know, uh, overwhelmed by all of the choices that you have. Uh, it was an experience that, uh, of somebody being plucked from one country and going into a, another country where even though I understood the language I didn't understand what to do or how to behave uh, or what to expect and uh, it was very overwhelming it was really overwhelming uh, you know, I think it was so overwhelming that I, I wasn't able to enjoy the, the freedom at first. Uh, as I said, uh, there's nothing to that the prison system or that we can do to prepare us for that, that whole flood of uh, emotions. 
because we live our lives one way. We put on those masks and we take them on and rearrange them and flip them around and, and then, uh, you know, we come out here and, and uh, you don't have to wear those masks anymore. You know, you can be who you want to be. Uh, always being a strong uh, person, it, it never bothered me to, to show my emotions. Uh, but having a whole another flood of them thrusted upon me uh, because of freedom was and everything being so surreal uh, it was overwhelming I uh, I spent 20 years manufacturing eyewear and becoming certified uh, to be a dispenser in, in prison and I had made some contacts out here with some guys who had uh, previously been in prison. One of them who runs a business successfully and, and uh, said that I would have some employment with him. And uh, due to the economy, it, it didn't pan out. And uh, after spending a period of time uh, of uh, trying to find uh, employment in that field, not having a vehicle and, and uh, the time, it's very time consuming public transportation. And uh, if you can't be there for the employer, then uh, you're not going to keep a job for too long. So I had to uh, switch careers and I began to work for a contractor, a general contractor, and I did some firewood hauling, and I worked with a cement contractor. Uh, I worked with a landscaper for off and on for a little bit, and these guys would employ me, uh, pay me cash money, and then uh, I'd put in a ton of ap applications. And roughly 90 days ago, uh, one of those guys had called me up and asked me if I was still interested. And it's a landscape maintenance field. And uh, I said I was. I was working for a cement contractor at the time for cash money, but I needed to get on the books. Uh, paying taxes, stuff like that, being legal. That's what this is about. Um, living life on life's terms and, and doing it right. And uh, so today is seven months, 14 days. I've worked uh, for this particular company for roughly 90 odd days now and uh, have received a dollar increase in pay since then. Uh, they're very satisfied with my work. Uh, and I do enjoy uh, that type of work. It puts me outside. I get to travel around the Sacramento area, so it helps me familiarize myself with the place that I now live in. Um, by being able to do that, that, uh, that helps me to be able to help some other people, you know, because I come into a series of contacts with people throughout the day um, because of the maintenance job. And uh, for right now, uh, that is, is my direction that I'm going to go in. Uh, where I'm at today, and uh, I'd like to start it off by uh, saying, you know, I'm very... Uh, I'm very blessed to come out here and uh, the man Tom Hall uh, put me in contact with uh, some AA people, came and picked me up, took me to my first meeting a few days out. Uh, that's my home group. Very active in AA. Uh, 
the last seven months uh, I've remained teachable uh, I've been employed most of the time uh, I have my own vehicle now insurance driver's license first time for everything uh, a lot of first uh, tomorrow be Christmas another first uh, and I look forward to the new year of uh, you know job perspectives uh, what's going on uh, being a service uh, I enjoy spending time with my sponsees and my sponsor uh, trying to be a service at, at the house here uh, just being there for the next guy who uh, who hopefully comes here and, and gets out and trying to give him uh, a hand at at, uh, at what can happen for him the same things that have happened for me you know uh, life is great and uh, I wish all of those who are in there uh, still in uh, the best in this new year coming. Please, I'm teasing teas for terminate like strict now mix with cheese to terminate. I'm atypical, despicable deep. Y'all are caught up in a predicament and pickle to beat. Worth more than a motherfucking nickel to me. But your punchlines are nothing but a tickle to me. Rap fans advance to plead with them. To get a key, set them off for you to flee with them. Got everybody thinking I'm a little bit crazy, but I'm okay with it because I kind of agree with them. Now wait a minute.